Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name's Emma LaFave and today I'm testing out four new different kinds of 100% cotton cold press watercolor paper. Spoiler alert, I think I have found my absolute favorite cotton watercolor paper yet. So let's jump in and see which one it is. Okay, so today I am testing four different watercolor 100% cotton papers that I got in my art haul from Hyatt's All Things Creative. If you guys saw my last video, you'll know which ones I got. And today I wanted to test them out because they are papers I have never tried before, except the B Company watercolor paper. I've tried that, but I want to see if it's the same uh, quality as I remember it from years ago. So let's get into it. So I am going to start off with the Saunders Waterford paper, which if you remember from the video from last week, nope, from well, whatever it was my last video, um, I had a huge sheet of it and I just cut it up. And now I feel like some people might wonder, how do you know which side to paint on? I feel like with any watercolor paper, they're always kind of rounded more on one side it like kind of tapers off towards the corners um, one side just feels more flat and the other side feels a little bit softer so usually the softer kind of more textured side is the one you paint on but I have a feeling this feels pretty nice and soft so I, I think you can paint on either side um, but I'm going to test this one out first this is one I really wanted to try because I know lots of people love it and use it. So that's what we're going to start off with. And I think on each piece of paper, I'm just going to do some quick florals. I'm going to try some uh, wet on wet. Maybe I'll do some layering. Maybe I'll try some lifting just to see um, a variety of techniques and see how they work out on each paper. So I'm going to try and do the same thing on each paper. And I'm going to stop talking now and we're just going to go for it. So um, let's just grab some of my favorite pink. I'm using my size 12 round brush right now to start and I have my Winsor & Newton watercolors today and I'm just going to do a quick kind of peony. Okay so this is the Saunders Waterford paper and just kind of want to talk you through initial feelings about each paper, how they're reacting, um, this is a really nice paper. So to the touch, it feels very soft, like it's very soft and you can tell that the color just seeps right into this paper. Like it's, it doesn't sit on top. It gets right in there, which is what you want with a cotton watercolor paper. Um, it allows for the paper to stay wetter longer. It allows for the color to really kind of set in there. You'll notice um, if you're working on a cotton paper versus like a cellulose paper, the cotton papers tend to be a lot brighter or it takes the color and makes it a lot brighter opposed to like Canson, um, the XL watercolor paper, that really cheap kind of <laughs> cellulose paper. It just sits on top and it's not as vibrant. Cotton papers tend to be a lot more vibrant uh, just because it really soaks in that color. So I'm going to grab some more pink and I'm just going to see how it does with wet on wet. Oh no. And I'm saying oh no because this is really nice paper. Um, it's not as textured as Arches, which is typically my favorite watercolor paper. Um, it feels a lot softer. So I know with Arches watercolor paper, sometimes you can really feel that texture when you're dragging your brush across it and it can get a little harder to gauge how much water you need to put on there because I tend to use a lot more water when I'm working on arches and this one I mean you need a de decent amount of water but you don't need a ton which is very interesting so I'm saying oh no because this is really nice paper but I don't really have access to it here so this is making me sad because I really like it like really like it oh my gosh it's so easy to work on um, and then my other favorite kind of paper are my sketchbooks from Etcher. And I feel like this is a lot softer. Like this, uh, I, I can't explain it besides saying it just feels like the softest paper that soaks in and really takes that color so nicely. It's a little mind blowing right now. I'm really liking this and I really wish I didn't like it all that much. And I'm noticing because it is so absorbent, like I have a decent amount of water here. It's pooling a little bit, but I can see a lot of it soaking in. So I'm not getting a lot of that pooling, 
which can be really tricky for beginners if you don't know too too much about water control you can have a lot of issues with that and this just absorbs that paint and water really well that it just makes it really easy to paint on. Uh, not that I was hoping that I didn't like it, but really, it's so nice. I just wish I had access to this. Now I'm going to have to really be mindful with the rest of the sheets I have cut up from the big sheet because I don't, or I'm going to have to splurge. And I, I don't remember if I saw it on Amazon or not. I think I did a while ago when I checked and it just was outrageously priced. But if I was ever planning to do, you know, like a painting for someone to keep or sell or you know what I mean? I Maybe I would splurge on this paper because this is really nice paper. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really have a plan. I'm just kind of lumping a bunch of flowers together. Kind of going in on this blindly a little bit. Making a little ranunculus there. Okay, let's get some greenery. And I do want to try lifting some of the color. Like it's still pretty wet here. This is still decently wet. Like it's, and it's really hot in my office today. So when you're looking for a cotton paper, Ideally, you want something that absorbs the water really nicely. Let's just try and lift this just to see. Like if I wanted to fix a mistake, I would lift it, then take a clean, slightly damp brush and just try and scrub it and then lift again. Again, one more round. This is just how you can fix mistakes sometimes. Okay, it, li it lifts, okay, decently well. Um, but yeah, the cotton paper that you kind of want to go for, you want something that absorbs the paint really well, stays wet longer, and really it depends on your preference with the texture. Because if you've noticed, there is cold pressed, hot pressed, and rough watercolor papers. So the difference is that cold press is usually kind of toothier or textured paper. Um, hot press is very smooth, uh, has very little texture. Um, I find hot pressed to be best for like illustrations. That's just my own opinion. Um, and then rough is a really toothy texture. So it has a lot of texture to it. Um, I feel like you need a bit more water to really get that paint to kind of soak in. Um, so that's why ideally I love a cold press paper. Uh, but it's totally up to each person. Um, if you do get a hot press paper, one paper that I really do enjoy is... Uh, the Paul Rubens sketchbooks, which I can actually show you after. It's a hot press, but it performs kind of like a cold press. So with hot press, it's so smooth that I, f I find that even though it's 100% cotton, the paint sometimes tends to s like just sit on top. It doesn't soak in as well as it does with a cold press paper. Um, but with the Paul Rubens one, it actually soaks in pretty well. Like and it's you can do some nice wet on wet um, techniques with it, which I have not experienced with other hot press papers. So that's a really nice feature of the Paul Rubens hot press. I don't think they have in the sketchbooks, at least they do have cold press paper separately, but the sketchbooks, the ones like these, and then I just got a larger one. Um, they say hot press, but they actually perform really well for wet on wet, which I can show you after. Okay, so getting back to this paper, I have to say I'm a little upset because it's very, very nice. <laughs> Not because it's bad, because it's very nice and now I want more of it. Um, in comparison to my favorite paper, Arches. Oh my gosh. I've been a diehard Arches fan for a very, very long time. And this may beat it, which I can't believe I would say. This may be the best cotton paper I think I've ever worked on. 
damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it there just because I want to get on to the other papers, but just a little up close. You can see how smooth it is. Um, I wanted to say there's not a lot of texture to the paper. Uh, like, you know when you can kind of see like a patterny texture underneath, but kind of looking it up towards the light, I see a little bit of a pattern texture to it, which I don't love, 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 but it's not a deal breaker. Um, it's really nice paper. The way the color soaked in and everything, it's just, it's very soft and wonderful. So this is amazing. Okay, next I'm going to try the B paper. Um, I tried this a very long time ago. Uh, this used to be in my description of paper. Ooh, this feels very thin. <gasps> it's only 90 pounds. Oh, I didn't read that. Oh, this is a bummer. Do they have 140 pounds? I just read that. But it came in the exact same packaging as the old stuff, which was 140 pounds. I didn't even notice the weight of the paper. Okay, this might be a deal breaker for sure. So when I used to purchase this paper, it was the exact same packaging. It had 50 sheets. It was six by nine inches, uh, but it was 140 pounds, 300 GSM, which is the weight of the paper, the thickness of the paper. And that really makes a difference when you're painting on a paper with the warping and buckling. The lighter or thinner the paper is, the more it's going to buckle. And so now I'm a little upset because I feel like this is not going to be great but let's just do a quick little test just to see oh what a bummer I spent some money on that if I knew it was that weight I wouldn't have gotten it to be honest okay so I don't know if you can tell right off the bat like I can just by working on this um, I feel like the color is not as vibrant as when I went onto the Saunders Waterford paper um okay at first test right now it glides smoothly the color does apply decently but it does feel lighter than the previous paper like it just feels like the pigment's not taking as well like i'm i'm removing it a little bit with every brush stroke which is worrisome to me. And it feels like it's drying a little bit. Like I can see a bit of a shine on it, but it looks like it's starting to dry in some places really quickly, which means that the paper dries really fast. It doesn't absorb the water as well. So that's kind of a negative. I'm gonna grab a bit more, try some wet on wet. Now I don't know if you can tell, but like when I did the wet on wet with the other paper, it exploded a little bit more. This just doesn't move as far. Oh, I'm disappointed already. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I'll have to look this paper up again and see if it comes in a 140 pound. Because if not, I don't know. So far, I'm like not sold. But we'll see the warping towards the end with this painting. Okay, so I'm just going to grab some yellow. Like it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have a lot of texture to it, so it's not hard to apply paint. It glides really, really nicely. Um, but it doesn't feel like, doesn't feel the same. Yeah, like you can just, I know it, it doesn't look very different, but you can just feel it soaking into this paper. It's really nice. Hold on, let me just try and get rid of this. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't lift amazingly, but that's fine. Okay, yeah, this so far dries super fast. Not a fan. Ugh. And so when a paper dries really fast, when we try and go back in and add our darker colors, you're going to see those bloom marks, which aren't always ideal. And I'm already starting to see a little bit of warping within the paper, especially right here. So again, not ideal. So also when a paper dries really fast, um, that matters a lot because if you're trying to go back in and do some wet on wet, like you can already see the 
the bloom's starting to happen here, and that happens because there's an uneven amount of water of what we laid down versus what was already there. And what a good cotton paper does, it allows for a paper to stay wet longer. It gives you more time to go back in and add some color. I like to do a lot of work where I have color bleeds, so I will do my florals, and you'll get these color bleeds in between flowers of just like a seamless, nice blend. Um, but if one area is already dry and you touch it with another wet area, you can either get these marks or it's just kind of layers on top, which isn't always ideal. So this is quite a bummer. Okay, so there's that one. I can tell you right off the bat, I'm not pleased. Um, as for warping, like the whole paper is not too bad. There's a little bit of warping, um, kind of similar. It's not, it's different. You can just see a little bit more bumpiness on the page. So doing um, a landscape would be really difficult on this paper because it is so thin. Again, you're getting those bleed or the blooms that aren't necessarily always desirable if you're trying to do something specific uh, because it dries so fast so overall this paper I feel like I'm just going to be using for my son um, or maybe as cards I don't know it's very thin I should have looked at the label a little bit better that's on me Okay, now we are on to the Sennelier 100% cotton paper. Uh, this has 20 sheets, again, 140 pounds. I always tell people what to look for when they're looking for cotton paper. And the fact that I didn't read B's watercolor paper kills me because I always look at the weight and I didn't look at the weight. I just saw the packaging and I recognized it. So I thought it was the same. It's definitely not. Um, but this one is 140 pounds, 100% cotton. And it comes with 20 sheets and it's a fairly small block. So I'm interested to see how this is going to go. It feels kind of smooth. It doesn't look like there's any kind of patterning to the paper, but I've never seen this paper before. So I'm definitely interested to try. Okay. Let's give her a go. Okay. So at first feel. Um, it's a little bit toothier than the Saunders Waterford paper. It's a little bit more similar to arches, I'd say. Um, you can just tell by the way you stroke. If it, if it, everything glides on really, really smoothly, it's a smoother kind of paper. If you get a little bit more texture to some of the outlines um, or like the edges, that's how you can kind of feel that it has a bit more tooth to the paper. So a little bit more texture. So the the pigment's soaking in really nicely. You can just kind of feel it. Um, it's see, it, it looks to be staying wet. Like I know I haven't waited a very long time, but I can already see like it's still shining. It's not drying immediately in some of those areas that are a little bit more sparse with the water and paint. So that's a good sign, especially for this price. This one was the priciest of the bunch. Um, a little bit too pricey in my opinion. Um, I would never pay this much usually for a, a watercolor paper at all. Um, but see how the, the way it kind of like blooms out? That's what you want, that and then the Waterford, Sanders Waterford one. The B one did not move as far. It's because it was not as wet. It didn't soak in evenly, so it had a harder time moving outwards. Um, but so this is pretty nice. Uh, but ye, so far, the pigment is just taking really well to the paper. And it's still wet. Like, I can still see it's not starting to dry yet, which is a huge bonus. So I'm glad that for the price point that I paid for this, it's a nice paper. I wish it was bigger. I feel like for $45, this, that which is insane, uh, $45 for a block of a small block of watercolor paper, this is a little bit excessive. Um, I'll have to price check how much the Saunders Waterford paper is because if it's around the same price point, it would make a bit of sense maybe because I, I kind of leaning towards that one a bit more. But if it's less expensive than the Sennelier, then I would definitely um, pick the Waterford over Sennelier anytime. It's a very nice paper though, don't get me wrong. This like this is still wet. That is such a bonus. Um, it just allows for more time to work on 
um, certain parts of your painting, whether it's a landscape or florals, the fact that you can go back and it dries slowly is such a plus. So that's kind of how I gauge sometimes how good a cotton watercolor paper is because I find, especially with beginners, we get so ex um, frustrated of how fast things dry and that you can't fix things. A lot of the times when a paper stays wet longer, you can go back and fix areas. You can allow some time for blooms and color bleeds and all that stuff like I've already mentioned. So this is a plus that it, it stays wet longer. Like it's a nice paper. It's a very nice paper. We're going to have to see at the ending of the, the price point to see what's worth it. Now if a paper, if you ever kind of paint on a paper and it seems to be a little bit harder to get that pigment and paint down, um, like I said with the first stroke, it, it felt a little bit more like it had a bit more texture than the Saunders Waterford. It didn't glide as easily. Um, it could also mean that you need a bit more water and paint on your brush. You could be using not enough. So take that into consideration because as I'm kind of painting more, it is gliding a bit better. So I don't think, I think it is still a little bit more textured than the Waterford, but it's not super textured. I think it's actually pretty comparable to Arches, which I don't find that textured. Like I, it is textured, but it's not like crazy textured. How many times do you think I can say the word textured right now? <laughs> I just realized that, sorry. Okay. So I am getting a little bit of a bloom here because this started to dry and this was wet. So I can always fix that just by, you can always even lift it. Let's try lifting this. Ooh, that lifts well. Let's try lifting this whole thing. Huh. Okay. I'm going to try and just scrub it out a bit. Okay. This paper lifts really well. That's crazy. Whoa. Okay, that like almost completely erased that leaf. That lifts so well. Holy. Wow. I'm just going to go back over. <laughs> That's crazy. That lifted so well. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but that leaf is almost completely erased. Like there's nothing there. And that was like one of the first leaves I did. Wow. Okay. That's a bonus that it lifts that well. Because that just is makes things so much easier if you're trying to fix mistakes. That was pretty impressive. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave that now. But this one is pretty nice as well super comparable to the Saunders Waterford. I'm actually really impressed with both of these, which is exciting. Okay, and then the last paper that we are testing out is this Hannemule. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> this is a German paper. Um, I have seen their line of watercolors before, but I had never seen their paper. Um, I've actually never tried their watercolors, but I've heard of the brand. So I got this paper. It is 100% pure cotton rag. So I don't know if that's different between the other ones because they don't say cotton rag. Um, but again, it is 140 pounds. This is a bigger block of nine by 12 inches, but it's only 10 sheets. So I mean, if you really kind of look at it, it's the exact same thing as this. <laughs> Almost, it's like two of these. And then if you cut them in half, it would be 20 sheets like this, but this was cheaper. I think this was $30 and the other one was 45. So let's see, I am going to just work on half of it. And then maybe when I cut it out later, I can use the other half for something else. Okay. So our last paper here, let's give it a go. First impressions. And here we go. Okay. It's pretty smooth. The first stroke is pretty smooth. I can feel the color soaking into the paper really well. Um, 
it feels very similar to the others and just feeling the texture of the paper with my hands um, it doesn't seem to have any like weird textury pattern looks actually kind of similar to arches and I compare everything to arches that's just because that's what I've always used and that's always been my go-to favorite watercolor paper so if that's if you're wondering why I compare it to arches that's why um, <laughs> it's also the one that's uh, I have the easiest access to is arches watercolor paper so that's why <laughs> okay so now I'm gonna just add my pink and it's blooming very nicely, moving a lot, similar to the other. It's staying wet very easily. It's a nice cotton paper. So far, besides the B paper, I haven't come across one that I don't really like yet, which is good news for me because that means I have more paper that I can play around with. Um, but, yeah, this is... This is pretty decent. Um, it doesn't feel too rough. It actually feels kind of smooth. I still feel like that the f the first one, the Saunders Waterford, is the smoothest. But this might be a close second, I think. I don't know. Very nice to work on. We'll test a couple other things in a minute. We'll try and lift maybe that same leaf that I do just to really see if it's the same kind of lifting action. Look at that, the way it moves. That's nice. And yeah, the paint and the water just soaks in so nicely. You can just, I wish you could see this in person. It just, can you just see the, like the, the evenness, the really soft blends in between colors? That is the essence of a really good watercolor paper. Okay, in my opinion. Okay, and now for our leaves. I'm gonna do the one up top here first. And I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit and then I'm gonna try and remove it. See how it does with some lifting. And then once I'm done this painting completely, I want to just test a little bit more of layering on all of them just to see how well they layer if you overwork a painting maybe does it pill does it fall apart okay let's try and lift that oh wow same oh my gosh it's like you're completely erasing it almost like you can see just a faint faint no not even almost like a faint outline but barely wow okay so that lifts really well too all right so there it is oh wait, I wanted to put a little bit of the darker green like I can still go back and put some darker green in there it's still a little bit wet that's a good sign okay so there it is Okay, so now quickly I'm just going to go over some of them and just do a little bit of layering, at least the ones that have dried. So I just want to kind of see how they layer. Sometimes what you can get with a layer is that if the color has not really soaked into the paper, it will lift underneath. So like if I go over and over and over and over it again, it will lift underneath a bit. And that could be the paper or the paint, but in some cases, it's really just the paper. So I kind of want to try that. I can lift fairly easy on this B paper, which doesn't surprise me. Um, let's try the Saunders Waterford paper. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of scrub just a bit. Okay, see, so it's not lifting underneath. I can still, like, can you guys see that? Like, I'm kind of scrubbing that leaf underneath, and it's not really disappearing, which with this one almost made that leaf going that way underneath disappear. Having your paint lift very easily off your paper can be a sign of cheaper watercolor paper. Not in all cases, but it can be a sign of that. 
or not as good. Okay, so there we go. One thing I forgot to do with these <laughs> flowers was the center of this one. I'm just gonna do a quick little boop, <laughs> just so they don't look too weird. Okay, now let's try and layer these two. We have the Hanimule, Hanimule, I don't know how to say it, over here, and then the Sennelier. So let's grab our green, let's try and layer like that, and then I'm just gonna kind of scrub a bit, see if I can lift that leaf underneath, mm, which I can. <laughs> huh, interesting. Let's try a darker leaf here. Wow, it comes like right up. Whoa. Like it lifts so easily already when it's dry. Usually if something's dry, you can't lift it all that easily, but like, look at this. Like you can kind of lift it. So um, that could be difficult for layering. So if you're doing a, a painting with lots and lots of layers, that may play a factor in it, into it. So, huh. It depends on what you're using it for. So this one kind of lifts after a while. You might have to be a bit more gentle with your layers. Let's try the Snellier. And I'm just kind of going over it. I'm gonna try that Saunders Waterford again. Yeah, that lifted almost completely. Let's try and Yeah, like, look at this. It lifts so easily. I'm kind of shocked. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just if you're trying to work in layers, it might be tricky. Like, yeah, the, the Saunders Waterford is not budging all that much. You see that? So, so far, this would be great for layers. Okay, so now that I'm done testing, let's talk about our absolute final thoughts for these papers. I am just going to say this B paper is not worth the price at all. Um, I wouldn't have bought it if I knew it was only 90 pounds. Um, I'm going to use it. I'm going to give it to my kids. We're going to we're going to use it, but it's definitely not worth it. Um, I'm going to look up and see if they have the 140 pound version. And if it is, and if it's reasonably priced, I might put it in the description. But so far, it's for what other papers you can get. I don't necessarily think that the B paper is worth it. So I'm just going to throw that to the side. Okay, now our three papers here, I will have to say that I do love them all. They are all very, very nice watercolor papers. I think that the best, just looking at how they've dried too, the Saunders Waterford paper is just so much more vibrant. Um, like you have to be able to tell from, especially on camera right now, like this is so vibrant and I'm not getting a lot of, little white spaces in between on this as I am with some of these. These This is really good paper. The Sennelier and the Hannah Mule, both really good. Um, very comparable to Arches, but I feel like the Saunders Waterford paper may be the best. Now, if you're looking for a cotton watercolor paper that maybe is very forgiving with mistakes and stuff like that, these two are really great. They are very pricey though. This one is better priced. If you were to pick between Sennelier and the Hannah Mule, I would definitely suggest the Hannah Mule, I think. Um, but you'll definitely have to calculate the sizes and how many sheets are in whatever you have access to. Okay, friends, excuse the do. Um, I just got back from the gym, but I did a little bit of math and digging and I wanted to update you on prices and basically what's worth it. So this is Amazon Canadian dollars, just to let you know, um, but definitely check out your local art stores and your Amazon sites to see the difference. But I wanted to let you know that the Sennelier, very expensive still. It was over $50 for the same pad. And so I don't necessarily think it's worth it, especially for such a small pad. However, I did find the Saunders Waterford paper and it was a nine by 12 pad of 20 sheets for $49.77. So if you work that out to how much each sheet 
cost, it was two dollars and about 40 cents. Um, then the Han Mule, which uh, I had the nine by 12 block is $32.75 for only 12 sheets. So it is slightly more for like per sheet. It's like $2.70. Um, so honestly, you'll get more with the Saunders Waterford for the $49, almost 50 bucks. It's totally up to you, but I did want to kind of calculate that just to see what was worth it. Um, but again, prices are gonna vary depending where you are in the world. Again, work with what's in your budget. You don't have to get expensive cotton papers to start out with watercolor. If you are new to my channel or new to watercolor, um, I will let you know, and I've explained this before, I started out with like dollar store supplies, and I do even have videos of like testing out dollar store papers and kind of showing you what I started with, and it was very, very, very cheap kids supplies. So you never need the best supplies to just get started in painting, um, but when you do, learn to love it a bit more, you will notice that supplies do make a huge difference. So I hope that was a little bit of insight into what may be worth it for you. So definitely check it out. And that's about it. But the Saunders Waterford paper is definitely amazing. So this has to be my winner. Um, I'm going to go and check on Amazon how much it is. <laughs> and I will try and let you guys know. But remember, you guys, depending on where you are in the world, you're gonna have access to different types of papers. Not everyone has access to the same thing. Not everyone has the same budget. Please work with what's in your budget. This is just me testing out different ones that I never tried before. So I hope that was informative. I hope you guys gained something from this video and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.